people defending Canelo's tendency and desire, this ain't the first time it's happened, okay, to give his opponents very short training camps, to announce the fight very, very late, just a month or so before they happen, are downright despicable and or ignorant, probably a combination of both, a little bit of both. Look, this ain't the first time, again, he did it, right? It's not the first time. Why is Canelo doing it? If it ain't the first time, then it's deliberate. If he is doing it deliberately, then we have to ask why. Are we still following logic? And the only, well, acceptable to me anyway, explanation is that he's looking to compromise his opponents. Because again, fighters, or at least one fighter, has complained about it being that. No, two fighters. From what I know, from what I remember, Billy Joe Saunders and um, Caleb Plant both complain about not being given enough notice to prepare for the fight. And this is something that Mayweather did toward the end of his career. And Canelo's following, following the Mayweather blueprint to a T. I mean, we could talk about beefing with your promoter, going striking out on your own. We can talk about all this diva stipulations. We could talk about Vegas judging the referees. I mean, we can talk about him teasing people, doing market research, basically saying he's going to fight a bum and then fighting someone that's just a little bit better. Right? There's so many different things. I mean, the, the clothes he wears, right? He dresses like a woman sometimes, right? I mean, there's so many things we can talk about um, that he just straight up took from Mayweather. And he's elevated his diva game, Mayweather's diva game, to, to another level. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. You know... Obviously, he does this to compromise his opponent. So anyone who's okay with this is, A, not interested in the best fighting the best at their best, okay? So you're not a boxing fan. You're just a fanboy. You want to see your favorite fighter or one of them in a safe fight, as safe as possible. Because should they lose, you feel like you lose, you fall into depression, drugs and alcohol, right? You Maybe you beat your loved ones. Obviously, I'm not saying you guys because I've done a very good job of eliminating um, retards from this channel. But, you know, the general you. That's why these people got mental issues, man. And they're not boxing fans. If you're okay with this, <laughs> then you don't want to see competition. This is like... The way Canelo does his opponents is like, let's say, Conor were to fight. And UFC is a good example because like, that would never fly, right? That's, that's, that's how you come to understand, come to grips with reality, come to understand how BS this is. Conor is, let's say, rematching Khabib, right? But in the contract, or he does something where he prevents Khabib being from being able to wrestle, right? Fight me, but you can't wrestle. This is what, this is exactly what, not exactly, but this is akin to what Canelo is doing with his opponent, right? You're going to be drained, right? He's, he's taken away their best weapon, right? What was Sergey's and what's Callum Smith's best? What's their advantage over Canelo, right? Signs. He's taking that away. He's literally making them smaller with dehydration clauses. But also, the strength that comes with size, he's depleting them. More importantly, he's depleting them of that. Right? So, Del Boy, Blue Collar Sports TV, um, made a good video explaining some of the things that are wrong with a fighter not having a full training camp, how that hurts them, right? And he talked about, you know, 
the way a camp is structured, basically. You have a certain timeline, you have certain costs, and you need to follow a certain pattern, a certain design, a certain set template that you've worked on your entire career. You've perfected, hopefully, by the time you're champ. And it, it's working for you, and you need to follow that in order to have to be in the best shape possible. And when we look at Callum Smith, when he fought Nikki Holskin, right, he sucked in that fight. Why? Because it was a last-minute replacement, right? He, was, he wasn't getting ready for that guy. He was getting ready for somebody else, right? But then he had a nice long camp. It took like seven months or so for George Groves. He knew he was fighting George Groves, and he got ready, and he shined in that fight, right? Hassan Endam, probably the same case. And yeah, he was old and all that, but, you know, so better than John Ryder. And then they announced the John Ryder fight, uh, I think it was something like seven weeks before it happens, right? And he sucked in that fight, right? He didn't have enough of a training camp. And, you know, Canelo's people, he's got people... I guarantee you that he's a multi-million dollar industry and he's got people studying this stuff, looking at the circumstances around any potential opponent's performance, any potential performance of any potential opponent. And they look for patterns. They look for, you know, why they were good or why they sucked. And they try to exploit their weaknesses, right? Which is fine if you do that while having the fight on a level playing field, right? You want to exploit their technical deficiencies or whatever, that's fine. But, you know, this is why he's giving them a short camp. This is why he's fighting Callum Smith, because Canelo has a tendency to do that anyway, because it'll compromise any fighter, but other fighters, some fighters more than others. And Callum Smith, looking at his record, looks like an example of someone who gets tremendously compromised by not having a long training camp, or they say the same kind of, tra- the kind of training camp that he wants to have, not the kind of training camp that Canelo dictates to him, but the one he wants to have himself, right? And again, Doughboy touched on a few very important issues, such as you have to hire a staff, okay? Nutritionist, trainer, so on and so forth. And especially in these tough economic times, right? That's that adds another wrinkle to it. But you gotta pay money. You have to invest in your training camp. Hire these people way ahead of time and, you know, get to work. And the longer they work for you, the more you gotta pay them, obviously, right? So for people saying, Oh, Callum Smith's been in the gym all this time. Okay. You're telling me he's just had all these, uh, he had all this staff on call for six, eight months now, paying them all this money? No. Who would do that, right? Because they've been teasing him with the Canelo fight for what, a year now? You're telling me he's just been in the gym? Is that why he sucked against John Ryder? Right? Because he was preparing for someone else? Because he was overtrained? And that's another huge issue. People saying, oh, he's been in the gym all this time. Okay, so he's going to be overtrained. In general, he's going to be overtrained and specifically won't have enough time to train for Canelo. But in general, he's going to be overtrained. Great going, guys. Like, excellent, exceptional logic. It's like, it's like they don't... Look, most of these people, they understand this stuff. They're just fucking fanboys. They're trying to polish an absolute turd of a fight. They're happy. Because it's a safe one for Ginger, right? And people don't want to see these fighters challenged. They just want to see them winning. No, by any means necessary. Because they're morally corrupted, as I've been saying. Anyway, Callum Smith, especially with, you know, with these bigger guys like Callum Smith, who is huge for the weight, right? Callum Smith, I guarantee you, is the type of guy that needs... At least three months. The first 
month, he probably just loses weight, right? He gets into decent shape. And then he works on technique and game plan, right? And timing everything, right? Peaking at the right time. And then, um, you know, for any specific opponent. And he also obviously loses the last, probably like the last 20 pounds in training camp. Callum Smith is, what, Usyk's height, 70, and height, I think height and reach is about the same. Look very comparable, right? So he's he's got Usyk's frame. Obviously he's not as big, but this dude walks around at 210, easy. So maybe he comes into camp at like and when when he lets himself go, just and I'm not talking about letting yourself go like, you know, regular Joes let themselves go. But when he's not training, he's probably like he's over 200 pounds, has to be. So then he gets into shape, good shape, drops maybe 20 pounds or so. I'm talking about fat and muscle. So that brings him to maybe 190, and then he still has, what, 22 pounds left? Most of which will probably be water. Some muscle still, probably. Maybe a little bit of fat still. And then water. I would not be surprised if this dude was dropping 40 pounds to make the weight. Right? Now, again, 40 pounds from being out of shape. Out of fighting shape. Even if it's just 30, that's a tremendous amount. How do you think he does it? You think it's all natural? <laughs> of course not. And this is the most important thing. Not just timing, timing, timing. Not being overtrained, peaking at the right time, okay? Being at your very best when it comes to all the legit shit, right? Training, nutrition, um, sparring, sparring, fucking sparring, hiring sparring partners, right? You think he's just going to be able to hire the pool of people he can hire to spar with on short notice? Not only does he have to pay them more, it's, it's smaller, right? Because they're busy doing other things, perhaps. Or they're out of shape themselves. So... Timing, people. He's got to time his PED stack properly. It's a science. Pharmacological science. They got the shit down pat to a science to bring this huge dude down to super middleweight. This guy who could one day, I mean, he'll probably be so depleted, so drained by Canelo and take such a big beating that... He's just going to be a bum after that, probably. Maybe. But if not, this guy will one day be a cruiserweight. Okay? How old is this dude? Is he 30 yet? Just barely. Yeah. This guy, if he wanted to, he could fight a cruiserweight. Okay? So, when fighters juice, yes, ladies and gentlemen, all top level athletes are on the juice, okay? Sorry to shatter your beautiful worldview. <sighs> this guy has to time. He has to take a certain amount of a certain fat burner or protein muscle burner, right? He has to, at a certain time before the fight, right? And he has to take... Uh, whatever exogenous testosterone certain time out from the fight to get the maximum benefit, right? And most fighters do that months before the fight. So that when, you know, if there is drug testing, when drug testing comes around, the shit's out of their system, and that's when they're reaping the benefits of the drugs. He has to take all these drugs so he can way, way before camp, or maybe during a super long camp, at the beginning of a super long camp, so he can have the powers of recovery during camp, so he could train harder in camp. 
while taking, you know, cortisone and, and stuff like that. Beta-2 agonists, like, like clenbuterol, that type of stuff, okay, to burn up the fat and the protein that he carries around. That makes him a fucking cruiserweight. This, this dude walks around at heavyweight, probably. Why not? You, you name me a 6'3 athlete that's shredded like this dude, right? That's got the kind of muscle mass like this dude. That's not over 200 pounds. I'm 5'11 and a half. And when I work really, really hard, at something like 10, 12% body fat, I touch buck 80, right? And I'm not even, I'm not even an athlete, right? I don't train. And if I do any sort of athletic activity, it's cycling. So I'm burning up muscle and fat, right? So this dude is over 200 pounds, easy, in good shape, easy. Look at this dude's biceps when he's flexing. Let, let's do that. So, you know, he has to time everything and do everything right. He has to time everything perfectly. Yeah, look at this dude. Big shoulders. Huge arms, especially for a boxer. And in that photo, like, zero body fat. When you look at his pecs, like... Like with a lot of boxers that have to make weight. When you look at heavyweights, this changes, right? He's got small pecs, small traps. Like, the dude is drained at the weight. Right, but he's drained by means of PEDs. Let's just keep it real, man. That's why it doesn't affect him as much. He's able to bounce back, rehydrate, right? And he's taking other exogenous. Um, look, when, when you walk around at like super low body fat, right? Your testosterone levels drop. Testosterone is produced from cholesterol, okay? When you're dieting, not ingesting any cholesterol, and you're walking at an unhealthy body fat level, right? This is why bodybuilders faint and die on stage. When you're walking around at this unhealthy, this is very unhealthy. That's why a lot of women who haven't been completely brainwashed by what a man, quote-unquote, should look like by these magazines, right? When they look at a guy that's shredded, they just revolt. They don't really like that. They prefer a dude that's got some fat. Not not a slob, right? But a, a dude that has some fat covering all those muscles. That's why they don't... They say, oh, this is too much for me. A lot of women will say that. Oh, that's a little gross. Why? Because they it's just like us recognizing that a woman with narrow hips is not very attractive because she can't... She's not likely to bear healthy children, right? She's likely to struggle through pregnancy, more likely than a woman that's got full hips. When they look at a guy that's like this, what, what do they see? They see starvation. Oh, that guy's not healthy, right? But it's, it's artificial, though, with a lot of these guys because they take fat burners, they take substances that keep their body fat at an unnatural level while at the same time shooting themselves up with exogenous testosterone. So whereas they're in a situation where naturally they would have low T, Part of the reason why women would reject them, perhaps, women that are still in touch with their instincts, right? They compensate by taking exogenous testosterone. So the biggest, the biggest problem, all of those things you hear people who will actually address this and talk about the realities of a short camp, the biggest problem with all of that, in my opinion, is the fact that well, Canelo knew when the fight was going to happen, right? He's the one planning all this. He knew, so he was timing his steroid stack and doing everything that he's used to doing, right? Probably a lot more of it for this fight. 
And Callum Smith won't be able to do that himself, right? So he's going to be completely depleted. He's going to have to use, especially if they slap some kind of drug testing on him, right? Which they probably will. He's going to have to struggle to make the weight because he won't have that extra help he has. He's going to have to struggle to burn up muscle and protein, okay? Whereas he would maybe take the first four weeks of a 12-week-long camp to do that, right, with the help of drugs. Now, it's not likely that he'll have those drugs, and he won't have the time to do it. So he's going to be losing probably 30 pounds, okay? 30 pounds in four weeks without that extra sauce. Or if he is able to use something, he's going to have to be very careful and his ability to do that, right, is going to be very much limited. He'll have less time anyway. And and they don't have experience doing it this way, so it could backfire at the same time. So it is it, a lot of problems with this. But the biggest, 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 most important thing is that this guy who's used to dropping weight artificially, I mean, you have to be fucking naive to think that a man can lose 30 to 40 pounds. A man that's, like, fit at a healthy size for, for any man out there his age, right? In that sense, who's fit. You have to be retarded to think that he could naturally drop 30 pounds and not be a fucking Auschwitz victim walking around. So this dude is going to be a shell of himself on fight night. And that's the goal of Canelo doing what he's doing. So anybody excusing this, supporting this, saying it's not a big deal, like is either completely ignorant about how this shit works, or it's just a scumbag who is not interested in fair fights. And that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching.